Let me just say that I believe with all of my heart our nation is in deep trouble. And the responsibility for the crisis situation, the perilous course we find ourselves on, rests largely on the shoulders of people who profess faith in God and a belief in the Word of God. The Lord Jesus gave us a commission to be His witnesses and disciples, and to disciple not just members of our congregation or our community or our church, but to disciple the nations. We have that commission. It is high time we become more serious about obeying it than we have ever been in our lives. If we do not obey that, the future of our nation is dim and dark, and I believe freedom will fall. We must stand up to preserve what we have been blessed to enjoy and share. And now is the time for people who claim to believe in the importance of faith, family, and freedom to stand together. We have to stand. The only group, the only influence base that can correct the course are the people who understand the importance of those values. Jesus said that he left us here as his disciples to make an impact. And he said it would be a battle because he said, I'm sending you as sheep in the midst of wolves. That doesn't sound like a church picnic. <laughs> but he did not say, I send you as sheep to the slaughter. I'm sending you out as sheep with the Lord as your shepherd who will direct your steps and protect you. He will enable you to accomplish the mission that is set before us. Jesus told us we are to love our enemies, but he did not say we're to get in bed with them. <laughs> now is the time for us as believers to recognize that we have a divine assignment, not to be pro-party, but to be pro-principle and lift up a standard to all parties, to all candidates, and to all voters, and return to the standard. We have a reliable standard, the ever-living, eternal Word of God. Return to those principles. It's absolutely essential. Jesus said you are salt and light. If you understand salt, you know it preserves and protects the precious, the preciousness of life. What could be more precious and more innocent and worthy of protection than the unborn in the womb? We have allowed 50 million innocent children to be slaughtered in the wombs of their mothers, and it's as though we don't even raise a protest anymore. We've got to offer to those who are in a desperate situation the counsel that will enable them to make the right decision. That's to show them not the problem with Roe versus Wade, but the preciousness of the life in their womb and the potential of that life. We've got to deliver that message to them. Jesus said if salt loses its effect, it's good for nothing but to be trampled under the feet of men. Are we not witnessing everything that is sacred trampled under the feet of men today? Faith, family, freedom, marriage, and life trampled underfoot. What happened to Chick-fil-A? Trampling freedom underfoot, not just a business, not just someone who took a stand for biblical principles, but they are trampling under feet our freedom. We cannot allow it to continue. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. And he said, do not allow that light to be covered. Don't let it be hidden. Do you know how I believe most believers have hidden the light? They have covered it with religious conformity and with com comfort and compatibility. And in that comfort zone where we have enough light to make good decisions and see our little immediate family and those around us blessed, we have failed to put that light up on the lampstand where it pierces the darkness. Jesus said, we're to become a city set on a hill. 
The only way we're going to be a city set on a hill is to stand shoulder to shoulder in heart harmony to become the city set on a hill that cannot, will not, and must not be hidden. That means we do that with absolute commitment to the will and purpose of God. It is time for every one of us to recognize that God has called us to stand up and make a difference. In our blessed privilege of choosing our leaders, among Protestants and Catholics, we have the ability to correct the course in short order. 50% of the Catholics and 50% of the Protestants do not even register. And 50% of those who do don't vote. And a very high percentage of those who vote are ill-informed or uninformed. That must be corrected and corrected immediately. This is the hour when the church must stand and refuse to stand down, refuse to be silent. We don't have to give one moment of our lives or one inch of our land to the enemy. Stand up for what's right and really focus our attention on God and correct our nation's course. We have to do it together and we have to do it now.